I wanted to take the time to explain one of the great mysteries of rear differentials, and that is the subject of a clutch pack. And so uh, here you have a rear differential broken out. And what we're looking at is the guts of what came out of the back of this axle right here. This is the differential housing on this solid axle that we have. And this differential housing on the other side of it has a drive shaft that's coming into it. That drive shaft is going into what's called a pinion gear. This pinion gear is linked up to this ring gear, which is right here, and spins. When this turns, because of the way that it is geared, because of the way that you see the teeth on the gear, it turns this, and this turns like this, which in turn turns the axles, which in turn turns the wheel on the far side. So drive shaft to pinion to ring gear to axle to wheel. And this is the motion of the engine turning like this, which 90 degrees turns into this, spinning the wheel in the directions that it needs to go. So where does the mythical clutch pack come into work? And that's one of the things that I wanted to take the time to explain today. So this, as you can see, this axle has little teeth at the end of it that are called splines. And these splines match up to an opposite set of splines that are in here. And this clutch pack sits inside of this housing. So it sits right in here. Now here's how it works. Obviously when you have teeth on the inside here and you have teeth that are here, when they are put together they are tightly aligned so that if you spin one it spins the other. There's no slippage. But what's interesting about it is that these teeth are not connected to the turning board of this clutch pack. So if I open this up a little bit, what you'll see as I take it apart is I take off one washer, which is a domed washer. This actually has a domed surface to it, so it's not flat if you look at it like that. So that provides a spring that presses down. The next piece that I have is a .065 spacing washer. And that spacing washer, as you can see, does not have any teeth on the inside of it here, so that when I take it off, it in and of itself, I'm going to put this down, the spring washer, it in and of itself is just a simple washer, okay? But on the other side of it, it has these little carbon pads that are on this one, this, this washer, that has knobs or um, detents on the outside of it. So that's the next piece. These carbon pads then press up against, you can see them on the other side, they press up against another washer, but this washer has teeth on it. So here's where the magic of the clutch pack happens. The axle is connected to the teeth on the inside. The teeth on the outside is connected to one of these many washers. So when the axle or the engine are turning together, this washer that's connected to the teeth, which is connected to the teeth on the inside, actually is turning. The other pad that's next to it is only turning because it is pressed with these carbon pads against the one that is mechanically turning. And this spacer that happens is only turning because it is pressed on the other side against the one with the carbon pads. And this washer, the little magic domed washer, is doing the pressing. So this is the one that when you put it on here is pressing against the whole clutch pack to keep the ones without teeth on it pressed against the ones with teeth on it. And that is what a clutch pack does. When the spring is loaded, so if I were to push this whole stack of washers and splined the washers together. When that spring is pushed against it, it means that they're all engaged together and that when the engine turns, it grabs the one that have little teeth, which turns this spline, which turns the axle, which turns the wheel. And when this spring is no longer pushed tight, it means that this will turn, but the ones that have the little teeth will slip against the ones that don't have the teeth and that means that it is slipping. Hence, you have a limited slip differential that doesn't drive a wheel if it's not pressed and does drive a wheel if it is pressed. So perhaps the final question that you have is what presses and unpresses this spring washer? And that is the motion of a wheel being loaded or unloaded around a corner. Meaning that if you drive to one direction or you drive to the other direction, you're actually taking pressure off of a wheel which means that you're allowing this clutch pack to unspring and therefore stop grabbing the ones with teeth and stop turning the wheel. That's how a limited slip applies power 
to the pieces of the turn where the wheel on one side is engaged and the other one is not. And that's the definition and description of a clutch pack. So what we just went over was why a limited slip works. But another question you might wonder is, what is a limited slip differential versus a full locking differential? There are many kinds of differentials, but in this particular case, what it means is that an engine is spinning and it is trying to put power to the wheels so that they can move. A fully locking differential means that one wheel is locked to the other wheel, is locked to the drive shaft, so that as it turns, it will turn both wheels. But what most people don't think about, who've never worked on a rear axle before, is that as a car turns a corner, the inside wheel has to travel less far than the outside wheel. So as a car's turning, this inside wheel is traveling a distance that's shorter than the outside wheel because they're defining the circle in two different radiuses. When the wheels are locked together so that they move at the same speed, what you find is that with a locking differential on sharp corners, you will have one wheel that will actually be being dragged through the corner, and so you'll get a squeaking. It'll go hur, 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 like that. Limited slip differentials allow the wheel to be able to turn at different speeds as they go around the corner, which makes for no squeaking, which makes for a more enjoyable drive. But the reason why the limited part of it works is that it is part of the time locked up when it's loaded. So that means that if you get in a situation where you need to hold power to a wheel, the limited part of the limited slip allows the engine to stay engaged enough so that you get a little bit of the locking feel with a little bit of the slip feel. And that's why you have limited slip differentials. It's not as good as a locking differential, but it's not as bad as a completely open differential where they're not connected at all at any time. And that's what those little clutch packs provide, the limited or partial connection.